And if you will turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 16. And when you would have found it, say hallelujah. Okay, I heard two hallelujahs, so we're going to just wait a while. It's so important that we see what we are preaching in the Word. So very, very important. And for those of you who haven't had time to read your Bibles lately, we are going to read, do some reading tonight. Acts chapter 16. <clears throat> I think I better go over on the handheld because we're going to be reading from verse 16 of Acts chapter 16 and it came to pass as we went to pray a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. And this they did many days but this she did many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were within his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straightway. When Jesus walked the face of the earth, Many sick, sick people were healed by him, and many were delivered from devils. 
Matthew 4.24 attests to this. It says, And his, that's Jesus, his fame went through all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people, and they were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those that were possessed with devils, and those were lunatic, which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them all. He was a healer here upon the face of the earth. Over and over again, we can read of such healings in the Gospels. But that apart, apart from his healing powers, he wrought many miracles, such as making the dumb talk, the lame walk, the blind see, and the deaf hear. In these instances, there were people who were born in those conditions. So it was not a question of the healing of a sickness. These people were born blind. They were born lame, never able to walk. They were born deaf, never heard a word from anyone. They were born blind. They never ever saw. And Jesus, Jesus delivered them from those conditions. This tells me that Jesus Christ is a miracle worker. Because it took miracles to cause someone who had never seen. It is one thing if you have some sickness in your eye and you are healed of that sickness. It's another thing completely if you had never been able to see. Born blind and someone opens open your eyes. So they were not healing or deliverances. They were actual miracles that were performed by him. Jesus was a miracle worker here on earth. And only God, no man can do a miracle. No man can work a miracle. Only God can make something that was not into something. And Jesus performing miracles tells me in no uncertain manner that he was God here upon earth. All man, but all God at the same time. Not drawing upon the powers of God, but operating by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. In John 2:11. We read of a miracle that Jesus did. There was this marriage feast, and they came to him and they said to him, We have no wine. All the wine was finished, and that was an important ingredient in a wedding. They went to Mary. Mary came to Jesus and said, They have no wine. He said, what have I to do with you, woman? Let them fill the water pots with water. And when they did that, the Bible says they filled it to the brim. And then he said, draw out. And when they drew out, they drew wine. And the chairman of the wedding, the master of ceremonies, says everybody holds the good, the, serves the good wine up front and then serves the bad, when everybody has had their fill, but you have held the best wine for last. And we read in John 2.11, this beginning of miracles the Jesus in Cana of Galilee. But I want you to know tonight that I have searched the Bible and I have found it nowhere it's recorded 
that there was an end to miracles. It began in Cana of Galilee. But nowhere does it state that the miracles have ended. And I'm here to say to us that anything that has a beginning and has not come to an end means that it's continuing. Oh, please, let me do like Glenn Roy. I need a amen. I said anything that has a beginning and has not come to an end means that it is continuing. And I want you to know tonight that Jesus is still in the miracle performing business. Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he began miracles at Cana, and it doesn't say that miracles have come to an end, I am putting it to you tonight that Jesus is still in the miracle working business. In our text... We see Paul and Silas unjustifiably being thrown into prison. They did not do anything wrong. They did not commit any criminal act to warrant the situation. As a matter of fact, they were doing good. When they cast out that spirit of divination from that woman. But her masters... Those that touted her because she would no longer be able to earn them money, they had Paul and Silas thrown into prison. We read in verses 22 to 24 that they were stripped, beaten, not with one stripe, not with two stripes, but with many stripes. They were cast into the inner prison and their feet fastened in stocks. Now one would think that this kind of activity taking place with Paul and Silas, that they had murdered someone, but they did nothing criminal. Stocks were made of two boards joined with iron clamps, leaving holes just big enough for your ankles. The prisoner's legs would be placed across the lower board and the upper board was closed over it and locked, and locked. So just the ankles were through, through two holes of a board. This is what the stocks were. And this is what happened with Paul and Silas. Stocks were designed for holding the most dangerous prisoners in absolute security but Paul and Silas did nothing to deserve that as a matter of fact they were peaceful men who had committed no crime at all just simply preaching the word of God this is typical of us as children of God today you say how so pastor there are times when we too are innocently beaten, so to speak, thrown into prison, have our feet in stocks, and I am not speaking of a literal prison. I am speaking of a prison of fear, a prison of worry, a prison of anxiety a prison of emotional hurts, a prison of depression, a prison of frustration, a prison of disappointment, and all those other prisons that hold us so that we just can't seem to get out of. And because our feet are fastened in stocks, so to speak, we seem incapable 
of coming out on our own. Despite this very dismal situation, and I must say to them, a hopeless one, because there was no way, absolutely no way, they would have let these people out until they had brought them to court and God only knows what would have happened with them. But in spite of their situation, in spite of what was happening to them innocently, Paul and Silas did not give in to despair. Contrary to that, we read that at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Could you imagine that? Having been treated in the way that they had been treated, knowing it was not justified. They did not call out and ask God, why? Why is this happening to me? They did not wonder, why did God permit that? How often I am asked the question by children of God. Well, why did God permit? Why did God permit? Paul and Silas did no such thing. In spite of their situation, we read that Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And not in any soft tone. The Bible tells us that the prisoners in the outer court, I believe the remand, because they were placed in the inner prison, the prisoners in the remand yard was hearing them so that they were praising with a loud voice. And the Bible tells us, suddenly, <laughs> I like that word suddenly, when God is involved, <laughs> suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Now let me tell you something about naysayers. You know what naysayers are, right? They doubt anything about God. The naysayers, as they always do, will say that this was just a coincidence. That that earthquake happened because when two tectonic plates under the earth slide one against the other, it causes a shifting in the earth, and that's how you have an earthquake. So that's what they are going to say happened. But look at when it happened. It didn't happen before. It didn't happen after. It happened when Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. This was no coincidental earthquake. This was a miracle performed by the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the risen Lord. This happened suddenly at midnight when Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And not only was there an earthquake, not only was there an earthquake, but the very foundations of the prison were shaken. Listen, you can believe what you want. I am entitled to believe what I want. And I choose to believe that nowhere else shook but that prison. I believe God shook that prison to accomplish a purpose. I don't know if you can have an earthquake that is regulated, <laughs> but then I know a God who can do all things. And if it takes regulating an earthquake to accomplish the purpose of God, he will do it. And I want you to know he will do anything to accomplish his purpose in your life. Even if it's an impossible thing. Because he is the God of the impossible. Yeah. 
immediately as the earthquake struck, the foundations of the very prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors flew open. And Paul and Silas' stocks came loose. I ask you tonight, since when does earthquakes unlock doors? Since when? Nothing that happened there that night was coincidental. Jesus, whom Paul and Silas served, was and still is in the miracle-performing business. Don't think that these are just the stories. The Bible tells us that the word of God is inspired by the Spirit of God. It is God who inspired and men wrote. And in any event, the book of Acts was written by Luke, who was on the scene there with Jesus, seeing and hearing these things happen. He's only recording what took place when Jesus walked the face of the earth. He was an eyewitness to these things. So they're not just the stories. God had them written so that we can learn from them. And one of the things we must learn tonight is that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, is still a miracle-working God, and there is no stone he would leave unturned. There is no stone he would leave unturned to accomplish his purpose in your life. When we read the word of God, we must believe that it is what it says. I remember some time ago, when I was being raised up as a young minister in another church, the Lord lay a specific text on my heart about Jesus and blind people. And the text went like this. And two blind men followed Jesus. And immediately as I read that, I heard, I heard in my head, I heard. If you could believe that, you could believe anything. How two blind people could see to follow Jesus. I mean, just like that. Well, I didn't argue. God said it. I believe it, and it settled it for me. I didn't care about how two blind people could follow Jesus. The Bible says so, and I believe that it is so. But of course, the devil is a fool. He should know that when you, lo you lose one sense, another sense develops stronger. And when you lose sight, your hearing develops more looking for a word and I can't find it strong acute thank you that's the word so that what the blind people were doing and Jesus was walking on paved road like we have it was dirt and he wore sandals so they could hear his footsteps and they were following the footsteps that they were hearing I wish to God some of us as God's people would be deaf blind because we listen to so much chippiness, we don't listen to see and hear where Jesus is going and so follow him. You know what he says? If you're blind, you could see. But if you could see so good, you're blind. Anyway, that's not the story. So the jailer, the same one who threw them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks and he did it with attitude, eh? Yeah, he's a jailer, he's a turnkey. He grabbed them, threw them in the prison. He did it with attitude, beat them up. 
that same one who threw them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks, thinking that they had escaped, was about to kill himself because he knew what would be the consequences in these prisoners going free. And Paul shouted out, do yourself no harm, we are still here. He ran, he ran in, fell before Paul and Silas, brought them out and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The jailer saw something that was not natural. The jailer who was unredeemed recognized that the power of God was in operation at that moment of the earthquake striking, the doors falling apart, the locks being unloosed, the prisoners are now free. He recognized that this was not a natural something. And all he wanted to know was, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This incident ended with the jailer and his entire household being saved. Does this sound like a coincident to you? Nothing else but a miracle performed by the miracle working God who is Jesus the Christ, the risen Lord. I am here to tell you tonight that Jesus is still in the miracle working business. And that there is power. There is power in prayer and worship. Don't forget that. It was at midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto the Lord and the earthquake struck. There is power. There is power in prayer. We like to neglect it. We like to allow the enemy to dissuade us with all kinds of things from prayer. But there is power in prayer and praises unto the Lord. God has so ordained it that through prayer we can reach up to heaven so that heaven can reach down and accomplish God's will for our lives. But we see a similar event taking place in Acts 12. Similar experience. In Acts 12, 1 to 11, we read, when Herod was the king, he came up against the church and he had James killed. He saw that it pleased the people and he proceeded to take Peter also. <laughs> I mean, these people did nothing else but preach the word of God. They were not criminals. Herod had James killed. And because that pleased the people, he just decided to take Paul as well. Peter just decided. I mean, these are people's lives that we are talking about. Herod must have been a Trinidadian. <laughs> killing people all over the place. For no reason, Peter was thrown into prison. And verse 5 tells us, But prayer, <laughs> but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. God. Thank God for a praying church. Thank God that the church did not wander 
if Peter would ever see the light of day again. Thank God the church was not trying to organize some jailbreak to get Peter out. Thank God they were not collecting money to bail him out. Instead, we read that the church prayed without ceasing unto God. I wish to God, as a people of God, we will stop playing church and become a praying church. I wish so to God. So while Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and with the keepers of the prison outside of the door, I want you to visualize the scene there with Peter. He was sleeping between two soldiers. He was bound with two chains, not just one. And outside of the prison door, the keepers were there. Impossible situation. Herod was going to have Peter's head for sure. There was no getting away from it. But then, suddenly, again, <laughs> suddenly, an angel of the Lord comes to him. And his brightness lights up the prison. The angel smote Peter on the side, awakening him, and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly. And immediately the chains fell from his hands. The iron gate leading into the city opened on its own own accord and they didn't have automatic doors then much less automatic gates prison gates the gates just flew open and Peter was now set free I ask you if you believe the word of God could we say this is coincidental could it just be happening by chance I said it already and I will say it again Jesus Christ the same yesterday the same today and the same forever he began working miracles in Canaan and nowhere is it said that he has ever stopped so then this has to be another miracle working power of the Lord Jesus Christ. But what is ironic about this whole thing, and I like this part so much, reminds me so much about ourselves as Christians today. The same church that was praying unceasingly for Peter, When Peter came out, he came to the door and he started knocking. And a little girl named Rhoda ran down to see who was there. When she saw it was Peter, she got so excited, she left the man standing by the door and ran back inside and said, It's Peter, he's outside. And you know what this church that was praying unceasingly for Peter said? Rhoda, you're mad. <laughs> that can't be so. Can't be so. So even though they were praying, they could not believe the power of prayer that they had. I tell you tonight, again, there is power. There is power in prayer and there is power in worship unto the Lord. So all that happened to Peter, though at first he thought he was dreaming, this was no dream, it was no coincidence, this was the miracle working power of the risen Jesus Christ. 
And I say to you again tonight, Jesus is still in the miracle working business. Still capable of opening prison doors. Still capable of opening prison doors. And there is power in prayer and praise unto God. So what kind of prison are you in tonight? What kind of prison are you in tonight? I said it at the very beginning because I know it to be so. Because if God has given me this word, somebody's prison gate is going to be opened and you're going to be set free by the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. What is your prison tonight? Is it a prison of fear? Is it a prison of fear? That you're experiencing fear for no reason at all? Is it a prison of worry? That you're worrying yourself sick over something that you cannot control? Is it a prison of anxiety? Having from serious anxious moments for no reason at all. Is it a prison of emotional hurts? You are hurting so much over what has happened that you just can't seem to get over it. Is it a prison of depression? Oh, that sick feeling called depression. Your spirit is downcast. You can't raise yourself up. It's like a vicious circle. The depression, causing depression, and causing you to be depressed. Is it a prison of frustration? Is it a prison of disappointment? Whatever is your prison tonight, whether it was named or not named, Jesus is here to open prison doors tonight. Could we stand, please? And if I were you, if you feel yourself imprisoned by any one of these situations that I have called, don't wait for us to call you to the altar walk out here as we sing and let Jesus the miracle worker do his do in your life tonight and open your prison door come on let's sing this chorus I may not have named your prison but you know what you are, what's holding you
a miracle worker. That's who he is. I don't know if you are here at the altar, but there is a prison I did not name. If you are here and you are locked up in that prison, I want you to make your way to the altar right now. This is God in operation, opening prison doors. This is not me. I only brought the word. The prison I'm speaking about, and I don't know if you're at the altar, I'm talking about a prison that holds you in, financial, in a financial bind. You just can't seem to come out of this financial bind. Every time you earn something, something happens and you have to spend it. Is that any one of you at the altar here? None of you at the altar in that prison? Okay, well, if you're in the congregation, don't remain there. Unless, or oh, you, oh, okay. Uh -huh. Are you in that prison too? Oh wow. Tanki, how are you lock up real bad? Woo! <laughs> yeah, nice. What is that song we sang about his faithfulness? This is the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God in operation. Even when we don't see him working, we know he's working. He never stops. He never stops. The Bible says it. The God of Israel never slumbers and he never sleeps. And he's too grown to pitch marbles. So if he's not slumbering and sleeping, he's working. And what is he working on? It has to be on our behalf. Precious, wonderful Savior and God, I thank you so very much that you are still in the prison opening business. I thank you so very much that you are still in the miracle working business. And I thank you so very much you have given us this very, very powerful tool called prayer. And the most wonderful opportunity to worship and to praise you. And so precious Lord, in standing on your promise of your word for your people tonight, I take authority over every prison door right now. I take authority over the spirit of the prison of fear. I take authority over the spirit of worry. Does anyone have, are you anyone here in that? Just raise your hand as I call if it's you. Okay, I want to know what we're dealing with. Anxiety? Anyone suffering with anxiety? Anyone experiencing emotional hurts that you can't seem to... Anyone experiencing depression of some sort? How about frustration? You find yourself frustrated? Disappointment? Any... Praise God. Thank you, wonderful Savior and God. You are a faithful God. You are the faithful God.
you are the faithful God. And the spirits that are holding you in these prisons, we are going to this lodge in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The name that is above every name, the name at which every knee will bow. Of things in the heaven, things on the earth, and things below the earth. The name at which every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every spirit of fear. I take authority over every spirit of fear, imprisoning God's people. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break your powers of influence over the people of God right now, and I command you, I command you, take your filthy hands off right now. I cast you off. I cast you out, spirit of fear. Spirit of fear, I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break your powers of influence over the people of God right now. Fear, 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 I cast you out. I cast you out. Every one of you, you must go. You must go. I break your powers of influence right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You spirits of worry, you spirits of worry, you spirits of anxiety, in the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of the living God, I break your powers of influence upon the people of God right now. You under my voice, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every spirit of worry, every spirit of anxiety, in the name of Jesus, I break your powers of influence. I break your powers of influence. I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of them now. Come out of them now. I break your powers of influence. I uproot you. I dislodge you. And I cast you out. Every spirit of worry. Every spirit of anxiety. Every spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You use spirits of depression. You spirits of depression. You depressive spirits. In the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of the living God, I uproot you right now. I uproot you right now. I dislodge you. I dislodge you and I cast you out. I cast you out. Depression, you must go right now. I command you in the name of Jesus. Go, go, go. I cast you out of the people of God right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of depression, every spirit of depression, you spirits of emotional hurts, you spirits of emotional hurts, you are tying up the people of God in their emotions. You are hurting them over and over again. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break your powers of influence. You spirits causing emotional hurts unduly. In the name of Jesus, I uproot you. I break your powers of influence. I dislodge you. I dislodge you from the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You spirits of frustration. You spirits of frustration. You spirits of disappointment. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I break your powers of influence right now. In Jesus name. I uproot you. I dislodge you. And I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You spirits that are binding up the people's finances in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
I command you right now to loose them. Loose them and let them go right now. I cast you out of the situations right now in the name of Jesus all you spirits binding up the people's finances in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I break your hold I break your hold I break your hold over the people of God I command you to take your filthy hands off them right now right now I command it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you must obey you must obey for I command it in no other name but the name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth in his name in the power of his name I uproot you I dislodge you and I cast you out right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus spirit of fear spirit of worry spirit of anxiety emotional hurts depression frustration disappointment and financial constraints in the name of Jesus Christ the resurrected son of the living God I break your hold I break your hold upon the people of God right now and I open their prison doors setting them free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth loose them now loose your hold upon them loose your influence upon them in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and precious Lord when it is all said and done we give you all the glory we give you all the honor we give you all the praise for your word says whom the son sets free is free indeed hallelujah oh come on give him glory give him praise he's wonderful he's glorious he's a keeper of his word yes he's a promise keeper Jesus. 
Sometimes we have people in the congregation who may be visiting with us and you don't quite understand this aspect of ministry. But let me read from the word of God, Mark 16, 17, so that you would know what it is all about. Starting from verse 15, Jesus says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name. In my name, his name. They shall cast out devils. And it just so happened, if you are here tonight, you don't understand what's taking place. This is a church. We don't just preach the gospel. We do the gospel. We cast out devils. Empowered by the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. You may be seated. Oh, just before you sit. Just before you sit. Just in the event that you're here and you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You heard what I just read there? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Meaning that if you do not have that one-to-one -one relationship with Jesus Christ, you are not saved. Saved from what? Hell's damnation. Saved from hell's damnation, the road on which we were all born. But Jesus Christ came to make a way off of that road. And it's only through him, only through him we can be saved. So if you're here tonight, you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not saved. You are still in a very dangerous position. And if you would depart this earth in that condition, you will never see the face of God as much as he loves you. If you reject him, he will reject you. So if you're here tonight, you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you. He wants to put his spirit in you to make you his own child, born of his spirit. And all you have to do it's one prayer away, a prayer we would help you with, and you will experience your own miracle. The greatest miracle that anyone can experience is to be born into the kingdom of God, translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. So is there one here tonight? You are not saved, and you want to say yes to Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me like the prisoner, like the prison keeper. What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone? Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. God bless you. Any other? Any other? No, understand this. God does not impose himself on people. He paid a dear price at Calvary for our sins. And we have choice. We can reject him or we can accept him. And a non-acceptance is an automatic rejection. You're here tonight and you're not saved. Don't reject the one who loves you and gave his life for you. He doesn't want to take anything from you. He wants to give you everything. He wants to give you a peace that you could never experience without him. He wants to give you a joy that you would never ever know outside of him. And he wants to establish his righteousness in you. That is the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Any other person? Any other person? Um, would you come? What we are doing here 
No, you have to be able to face me. What we are doing here, clapping our hands, is a joke. That's patty cake. That's a joke. Right now, the Bible tells us the angels in heaven are rejoicing over you. Angels are rejoicing. That's what the Bible says. When one sinner comes to Jesus, the angels in heaven rejoice. So I'm going to help you with a prayer. I want you to handle it right. It must come from your heart. And you must mean it like you mean nothing before. Okay? Close your eyes so you're not distracted. I'll help you with the words. Make it your prayer to God. Dear God in heaven, I come to you tonight thanking you for drawing me to you. For your word says, no man can come to you except they be drawn of the Father. Of the Father. So I thank you, Father, for drawing me. I believe in all my heart that you, Jesus, gave your very life for me. I believe you were buried and I believe you rose from the dead. And I now accept you, Jesus, as my Savior. I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Put your spirit in me and teach me to live for you. By faith, I receive you into my heart, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for saving me. Amen. Precious Lord, I pray that your spirit will be a witness with her spirit that tonight she was born a daughter of God. And I pray, Lord, that as a newborn babe, she will desire the sincere milk of your word so that she can grow thereby. We thank you for her. In Jesus' name, amen. I think we have time for one more song.
Bless you, Richie. You may be seated.